On this week's episode of Loyola New Chicago, we're hearing from students whose study abroad semester was cut short by the growing coronavirus epidemic. And Loyola is closing its doors for the remainder of the semester. From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Welcome back to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Michael Faso, and here's the news. Loyola has joined the list of universities that are taking action on the growing coronavirus epidemic. In an email from the Office of the President, Loyola has canceled all face-to-face -face classes. Virtual classes will begin Friday and continue on until the end of the semester. All students living on campus must be gone by the end of the day on Thursday, March 19th. Students living on campus who may have some challenges moving out and getting home can contact Resident Life to request more time. No decision on graduation ceremonies has been made yet, but students will be finding out no later than April 3rd. The news today means many students are to be making last-minute travel plans. Connor Bergen was on Loyola's Water Tower campus to speak with students about the sudden closures. Loyola students received the big news this morning. Campus is shutting down by next Thursday. And for students who live in residence halls like Bob Hart, the rush to pack begins. I couldn't believe it, you know, like I'm not from here. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. And so like all of a sudden I'm wondering, you know, like how does this impact my job? How am I going to get home? What are my parents going to do? You know, because like they move me in and out. I have a ton of international friends. I have people that don't live around here that I know. I have like, I know a couple people that like are experiencing homelessness right now and I like feel for them. It's just the whole situation is just like a mess. And as the rush to leave begins and classes move online, some students are concerned about their tuition money. And I was just at lunch with my friends and we were saying, you know, how does this affect our loans? Because we're not actually receiving the level of education that we paid for. I mean, I pay for my own tuition and it, it kind of sucks. Like, we're not going to get reimbursed. And I don't even know how they would go about doing that if they were going to. But it just sucks to spend so much money. Like, if I wanted to take online classes, I could have taken online classes from my community college. As of now, the administration has not sent out an email to students concerning reimbursements. The message just remains, get off campus as soon as possible. Connor Bergen, Loyola New Chicago. The news of the move to online classes has sent shockwaves throughout Loyola student population. Sophomore journalism major Alessandra like, Luciano watched all five of her classes out. move online over the last three days. To her, the move might be necessary, but is still frustrating. Her main concern is how much online classes will cost in comparison to face-to-face -face lessons. And like my opinion is like if I'm taking an online class, I don't want to pay this outrageous amount of tuition to take my class online when I could be, again, like doing it from a community college. Loyola did not return a request for comment on if tuition prices will be impacted. Closing the Chicago campuses comes almost two weeks after students at Loyola's Rome Center were called back to America. Junior theology and psychology double major Juliana Rotondi was studying in Rome, Rome this semester. She says one of the most upsetting parts about the process was how fast it all happened. Yeah, they told us on Saturday night um, and they said that we had to be out by Wednesday so some some people had four days um, but I was on like the group flight that came to Italy so they were gracious enough to like get us flights back so we didn't have to worry about that um, so I like flew back with a group of like 10 of us on Tuesday and then a lot more people came back on Wednesday Julia told Loyola News that when she found out when her flight was leaving Rome, she had less than 24 hours until takeoff. She said that last man dash was fun but bittersweet. To her, the most surreal moment was the first flight from Italy to Dublin. We were on that plane with a lot of other study abroad students from different schools. So we were all just kind of like sharing like our stories with each other. Like we were all like, well, yeah, this, this really sucks and stuff. Um, and I think for me personally, that was like a harder flight, like taking off from Italy. That I think is when it all hit me that like we had to leave. I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. Um, Students were brought back just days before Italy closed the nation's borders. And Tim Edmonds has also talked to some kids at the Rome Center. Tim, what was their reaction for coming back? Yeah, Michael, the students are definitely very frustrated at the moment. 
The students are in day eight of their 14-day quarantine after the quarantine after their return to the United States. I talked to a pair of them who, were t who told me they're struggling with being trapped indoors all day, and boredom has really begun to set in for them. So not allowed to like leave our property. So right now, the most exciting thing I've been doing is uh, digging and laying a sidewalk. So that's uh, that's really been my life via Zoom this afternoon. Upon their, their arrival back in the United States, they were instructed to stay indoors and away from others. To evaluate their symptoms, it takes several days for these to develop. Self-quarantine, so it's like, it's, they say it's your civic duty, so I mean it's okay to like go to a drive through and like very minimal, con you shouldn't really leave, but. And Michael, no students who've returned from the Rome campus have tested positive for the coronavirus at the moment. It's crazy. We were just there two years ago, and now all this is happening. I mean, I feel really bad for all those kids that are going through yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, it was just something that was so great and something I think about with college that was, you know, one of the best experiences. And to see them go through that, it's terrible. Yeah, it's really, it's really sad, and, you know, I hope that someday they can go back in and get to enjoy the last, you, you know, couple months that they didn't get to. All right, well, thank you for that report, Tim. All right. The coronavirus is sending many into a panic as more cases are being reported. Yesterday, the World Health Organization ruled it as a pandemic with more than 121,000 people affected. Here in the U.S., President Trump is placing a travel ban on visitors from most European countries, with some exceptions, including the U.K. Two NBA players have tested positive for coronavirus, and all remaining games will be suspended indefinitely. And the NCAA has canceled its March Madness tournament. Also, Chicagoans won't be able to enjoy the usual St. Patrick's Day festivities. The annual parade and the dying of the Chicago River has been postponed indefinitely. Before the coronavirus, some people were already dealing with another element, seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. In places like Chicago, where there are a lot of cloudy days in the winter, we're particularly vulnerable. Erica Oler shows us in... in Erica Oler shows us it can impact our mental health. Stephanie Nash is one of nearly 10 million Americans affected by seasonal affective disorder, or SAD. It's a type of depression that sets in every fall and winter. I'm a lot more low energy earlier in the day. I get a lot more tired around like 6, 7 p.m. and I'm like ready for bed. It's harder for me to function and if I do try and push and stay awake and stay productive. It's a lot harder to focus. Some symptoms include reduced energy, social withdrawal, and fatigue. According to the Mayo Clinic, the disorder can also cause a decrease in performance at work and school. Nash admits it impacts her academics. I noticed that my, um, my fall semesters, um, you know, when you start out in the summer and you head into winter, a lot of times I really struggle with like my final exams and my, my midterms. One of the many treatments to SAD is white light therapy, which involves sitting in front of a light box for 30 minutes a day. Northwestern University recently started offering free white light therapy to students. Students can lie in beanbag chairs and soak up the light anytime. Aside from white light therapy, there are other treatment options available. There are also medications that are used to treat depression, um, and then there's also just cognitive behavioral therapy, so talk therapy, uh, to treat the symptoms. Huang says that winter blues are normal, but if you're feeling tired, hopeless, or depressed for more than two weeks, it may be time to talk to your doctor. Erica Oler, Loyola News, Chicago. An estimated 10 million Americans suffer from seasonal affective disorder. With the time change and more light lighter in the day, most people's symptoms should start to subside. Coming up on Loyola News, how election talk is being incorporated into Loyola classes. And one thing that's not being affected by the coronavirus. We'll be right back. Hey Luis, did you know that your Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo with Luis and Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Great. <laughs> you never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's almost planned. The man because he's almost planned. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. 
Rosita? Mm -hmm. Did you know there's a right way to sneeze? <laughs> Let's show them, Elmo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. When you feel like your nose needs to clear it at you, this is how you act, this is what you do. Lift your arm up high, bend it toward your face. Sneeze right there in the belly place. A chill, a chill. You I can chill. do it with ease. A chill, a chill. That's the right way to sneeze. Thank you. To learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. Although the coronavirus is changing a lot of things, the Illinois primaries are hoping to stay the same. The elections are still set to take place this Tuesday along with four other states. Precincts in several Chicago wards are in the process of being relocated. The Chicago Election Board is encouraging voters to either vote by mail or vote early. Mayor Lori Lightfoot is hoping to extend the early voting deadline to Monday. The Democratic presidential race is heating up as the candidates have narrowed down to two choices with very different campaigns. Many states voted last week on Super Tuesday, leading a majority of the Democratic candidates to drop out. The race is now between former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders. After this week's primary results, Biden has gained a major lead and projected to be the Democratic candidate. Twitter users followed after these reports with the hashtag #ByeByBernie as they speculate he will soon drop out of the race. Other conversations are being held in the classroom. Loyola professor Eric Hansen is working to compare the 2020 presidential race to previous ones to show how students' political patterns repeat themselves. A lot of my conversations in class this semester have been about the history, just going back to the 1800s, of how parties actually selected their nominees. And in class tomorrow, for instance, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about the 1968 Democratic Convention. Many are still waiting to hear what Bernie Sanders' campaign will do after this Tuesday's crushing losses. He has said that he will participate in the debate against Joe Biden on Sunday, but his plans after that are unclear. Loyola's basketball season is over after a disappointing quarterfinal loss at Arch Madness to Valparaiso University. But the team has reasons to be optimistic for next season. Returning their starting lineup and almost their entire team from this past season, the Ramblers are primed for another a lot of league my conversations title in run next year. Additionally, they return injured guard Cooper Caves and welcomed Oakland University transfer Braden Norris to their backcourt after the pair redshirted this season. Loyola has also welcomed a pair of three-star recruits as guard Baylor Hebb and Jacob Hudson joined the program after decorated high school careers. The only loss for the Ramblers comes from the departure of senior guard Bruno Skopna, who played sparingly this season. Even though basketball season came to a disappointing end, Loyola's athletic director came out victorious. Steve Watson will receive the Under Armour Athletic Director of the Year Award by the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics. Watson has been Loyola's athletic director since 2014. Since he took the position, the men's volleyball team secured an NCAA championship and the men's basketball team made their Cinderella run in the 2018 March Madness Tournament. Watson will be joined by 27 other recipients when he receives his award in Las Vegas on June 9th. And finally, good news for beer fans. Despite several conflicting news reports on if global Corona beer sales were down due to the virus, a favorite local bar hasn't seen any impact. The Oasis Tavern is a popular destination for Road to Rogers Park residents and Loyola students. Bartender Georgina Murphy says the coronavirus is all that anyone in the bar has been talking about. Still, she says worries over the infection hasn't affected the number of people stopping into the Oasis. And when it comes to the sales of Corona beer? No, if anything, maybe a little bit of a spike because people may be thinking how brave they look if they're drinking okay, Corona. Now you guys run well, thanks for tuning in to the very last broadcast no, of anything, Loyal in New Chicago. A bit of a spike because people we may want to thank everybody for tuning in this semester. We hope everyone stays safe and they have a good remainder of what seems to be the semester and have an early summer maybe. But thanks for joining us. Once again, I'm Michael Faso, and this is everybody in my class. Thank you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>